I wanted to uh, just do a pop-up webinar on landing pages because I do a lot of online teaching and I'm creating landing pages all the time and recently I discovered how I could use my theme with WordPress to be able to create a landing page without any navigation. So um, let's just kind of start at the beginning and uh, we'll talk about what a landing page is and sometimes they're called squeeze pages. Uh, the reason they're called these pages is because what we want on our landing page or our squeeze page is no navigation. So we don't want anybody to be able to tap on anything in our menu. So the page you're looking at right now is the Facebook one page that I use. And I use the Divi theme with Elegant Themes. It has a visual builder, so it allows me to be able to uh, create page any way I want. And it also lets me use a blank page template. So you might look at your theme for your WordPress installation and see when you uh, add a new page on the right hand side, you'll see that it's probably the default page and you could tap that and see if you have a blank page that takes your navigation away. I have that with the Divi theme. It's a pretty cool theme. I've been using it for several years now and um, it works really well. I also have an example for you of a plugin, and that would be this page right here. And I will show you the plugin as well in the back of the page. It is a really great plugin for a landing page that you can create on your website if your theme doesn't let you use a page that takes a navigation. So the goal of your squeeze page or your landing page is to get somebody to either opt in for your email list. Maybe you want to give away an ebook or a report of some kind, and you want them to come over and you want them just to take a specific action. So that's why we don't want navigation all over the place, is we don't want people to become distracted and start clicking navigation that takes them away from the squeeze page. So of course, the purpose of my landing page is for the most part because I also use a different plugin. Uh, it's an elegant theme plugin called Bloom, and it allows me to drop down my opt in form after you've been on the website for a couple of skins. So there's a plugin that any, there's any number of plugins that will help you drop that opt-in form down so that you don't necessarily have to create an individual landing page if you don't want to for an opt-in form on your website. And uh, again, the landing page is so that we take specific action, whether it's signing up for an email newsletter, whether you're selling something like an event or maybe an item, or whether you're trying to fill an event as well. So uh, if you have an event that you're doing at some location like a hotel or something and you want people to register, you could use an op or a landing page for that as well. So that's kind of what uh, the definition is of a landing page or a squeeze page. And then its end goal for the page <clears throat> is them to take a specific action without any distractions at all. <clears throat> so here what I've done is um, I've created this particular landing page in order to get people into a six-week word per, or six-week Facebook course that I'm doing. So what I want to do on the landing page is at the very top, and you'll see it right up here in this very upper left corner, I do have the branding that I use for the teaching site Web with Deb and that just lets people have some congruity with knowing that if they've seen my website before when they see this landing page they'll associate it with me because I've used that same branding the logo Web with Deb with the little caricature which 
I have because someone said I was too old to know what, what to, to do on Facebook, but I digress. Anyway, um, you'll want to make sure that you have some sort of logo that matches your website so that people are confident that the landing page that they're on is your landing page. So make sure that you use that uh, image uh, to attract them. And then the next thing you want is you want to give them a compelling reason to stick around or read further. So what are you giving them? What is it is in it for them if they're on your landing page? So you need to have that single purpose, that focused message. So for mine is how to attract quality clients with your own Facebook community. I do a lot of community management on Facebook and I have some pages that are really successful, so I want to share that information. What you also want to do is when you're looking at this page, you'll see that there's a sign up button right here in the lower right hand area. You want to make sure that you have your call to action above the fold. So that means that I'm not scrolling. So you don't want people to have to scroll and search if they already know maybe you've spoken to them personally at an event and they said yeah i want your book and you say well just go over to the website and here's the address the website address and sign up for it and it'll it'll be delivered right to you so you want to make it easy for them when they come over here because as we move down this page you'll see that i've used a long one page format for this this particular call to action button jumps them all the way down to being able to sign up if they already know that they're definitely uh, going to be signing up for the workshop. And then another thing you might think about too, and I'm actually now that I've put this together and I was doing the research, I might add one of my videos. But if you incorporate a video into your landing page, then you have a much higher conversion rate. It actually goes up to about 80% if you incorporate a video into that landing page. So I would suggest that you give it a try and go for it. The plugin that I'm going to show you in a bit is very intuitive and should be able to allow you to put a, a video into a landing page very easily. Uh, one of the things that we're definitely seeing in website development, and Shelly, you can appreciate this, is we're seeing a lot of visual composers or visual builders. And I found this really great plugin to show you that's pretty much a drag and drop. You don't have to have any programming knowledge at all, at all to be able to use this plugin on your, web, your WordPress website to be able to create a landing page. And then if you have a social proof, like maybe you've been featured in some major online media, maybe you've done a post for, in my industry, it would be Social Media Examiner, or maybe you did a post for Huffington or one of the other larger um, blog sites. So you want to be able to use that as credibility. So they call that social proof. So if you have some of those accolades, definitely incorporate them into your landing page design. And then you might want to also give them a guarantee, um, you know, a money back guarantee if they're not satisfied or um, some way to get in touch with you if they'd like to talk to you more. You want to make it easy for them to take the risk to do business with you. So, it could be as easy as 100% satisfaction guarantee, but you might think about that when you're creating the landing page. Now, if you're selling a book or if you're giving away an ebook, you might want to give a pre preview of the ebook. I've seen where sometimes they'll let you see part of the first chapter or something, but if you can give them a little taste of the uh, book that they might be either buying or getting as a download going to increase the trust. So Shelly's asking me what would you do social proof by using a logo of the publisher where your post has appeared? Yes, that's exactly what I would do. Let me see if I have it up on 
this uh, PDF I'm looking at. But yeah, you would definitely uh, take a, you know, you can do a screenshot of a page uh, and you can even print a page off of your browser as a PDF. So if you take that and then put it into an imaging software and just take the logo out, uh, or maybe when you've given them the article or post, you could ask them if they would give you a, a copy of the logo. So yes, you would use your the logo of the site that you your content appeared on as a form of social proof. And then um, if you are using your landing page for a lead generation, so for instance, a lot of you probably had to put your name and email address in before you got into the webinar. And what I've done over at my email service provider is I've created a specific list for when I do webinars so that I know what it is that I taught. So for instance, this one has to do with um, landing page and web developments and I'm calling this series my pop-up webinars because I like to give away this information and I really enjoy doing it in a webinar. So I have a list or a campaign at my email service provider for just pop-up webinars so that if down the road I want to send out some content and it was relevant to what we talked about in a pop-up webinar, then I can just send that content to that specific group. So if you have a couple of different things that you're doing, maybe you're meeting people at networking events and you're collecting their business cards or uh, maybe you have a landing page for an upcoming speaking engagement. Maybe it's about, so many of you know that I run the speakers guilds here locally. So when I'm reaching out to people, I don't necessarily want to send people who are in the speakers guild list something about WordPress web development because that's not what they're interested in. So if you segment your community, your email service provider. So for instance, if I have a social media list and I do, I bring people into the social media list, which is what I do at Web with Deb, then I want to just send them content relative to their interest. So I'll send them content just on social media. If it's on WordPress, I'll send them content just on WordPress. So make sure that you're organizing your lists at your email service provider so that whatever the content is that you're enticing them with to get them into your email service provider is has to do with you when you're sending out uh, emails to them so that it is addressing their interests and that the one nice benefit of that is you'll see your unsubscribes go if you're sending them content that's not relevant to them you can probably figure that they might unsubscribe from your list. So that's what we definitely want to do with getting in, into the email service provider. So as you look at this long page and we scroll down, uh, right here, just barely below the fold, is the, are the bullet points for why would they be interested in taking this workshop. So you need to know what your market is looking for as far as content, and you want to be able to give them uh, what it is that they need. So, you know, why do they need to build a community? So you want to talk to them about what the benefit is of them building a community so that they know that when they sign up for your webinar or your ebook or buy your book, that they'll have a better idea of how you're going to be able to help them get what they need and in this case it's getting more business by building a community through social media. So you're giving them further proof as you move down as to what it is that they're going to be getting. So because this course I wanted to and it, and it goes over six weeks I wanted to give them a specific idea of what each week 
we would be talking about. So um, in this section right here, I've segmented my section. And because this is a builder, a visual composer, what I have here is I have a single row that I've split into thirds because I have a six weeks to cover so that I have the two words, the two rows split into the three parts. This lets me tell them specifically what they can expect for each one of the weeks. So if you give them a really good idea of what it is that you're going to be teaching them, or if it's an in-person uh, event, what will they be able to see or what, are, what will they be able to experience when they get to the event. So this landing page is giving them ideas of what they're going to be able to walk away after the event. And then I've incorporated a uh, call to action or letting them know when the course starts, when it ends, uh, how it's all going to work out when they get there, and then asking them if they're really ready to for it. So uh, give them that piece there as well. And also another link right here that allows them to be able to sign up for the event. I don't see my cursor there. Is my little cursor coming up, uh, Shelly, with my name on it? Some people like to see that and some people don't like to see it. Oh, good, you can see it. it I think it helps when I'm pointing somewhere. Okay. And then, of course, you want them the opportunity to go ahead and sign up for the event. And then, for me, because I have this long page going on, I've actually included at the bottom a bio of me. So it's a just my biography, why you would want to um, come to one of my webinars, why is it that I can offer you this information to help you build your business. So those are kind of the basic components that you want. If you have a theme that gives you a visual builder that allows you to build it, it's really cool, but here's a plugin that I'm going to show you that allows you to do the very same thing with your WordPress website. It just is done through a plugin and not through a theme. Um, when I send you the link to the recorded webinar, I'm going to include the links for everything we've spoken about here. So I will give you a link to this landing page builder. And I was really thrilled to find this because the other landing page builders that I had seen, you know, they were really skimpy. But this one is a really nice builder. So let me take you into the background and show you how you would use uh, the landing page. And actually, what this is uh, showing you right here is um, the Divi Builder, which is uh, I'll have to show you on the other page. I thought I was on the landing page, but I'm not, so here we are. So this is a landing page. Um, let me see. It's, uh, I think it's Wind Pond. It was, but I will also... Um, be sure to send you the links here. I really like this plugin. It allows you, if you're seeing on here on the left hand side, I can create a landing page. Uh, yeah, it is, you know, I think they're having some problems maybe weather wise with the internet connection. Um, so I know that it's cutting out. Uh, if you need me to repeat anything, just let me know in the chat area and I'll do that. Uh, sometimes that's the unfortunate part of using this technology is sometimes it just isn't always perfect. So I understand that. I made sure to do all my tests. In fact, I can see through the dashboard area here for the webinar room, we just went up to full uh, internet access. So I see when it's nice, big, and green. I can also see when it goes medium orange and then down into the little red. So 
Right now we're in green and it looks like we're good to go. So this plugin lets you create not only a landing page, it also lets you create that pop-up. So it could be that you can create a pop-up like I have on uh, WebWiz when you're visiting it where it pops up and shows you the ebook that you can download. It lets you create a form. It also lets you create a call to action and then a social promotion. Now, I have just installed the free version, so I don't know uh, how much all this is available to you with the free version, but so far the free version has worked really well when I've played with it um, today. And then you can also create your own template if you'd like to create your own template. So let me show you the one that um, I've already built out, and that was the uh, picture. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, let me do it a different way. Let me come over here to this far right hand side, and there is a little gear here. I'm just going to pop open the gear, and then I'm going to edit. You're going to see more of this in web development with your WordPress website. I think more and more themes are going to go to this type of a structure as well. So this is pretty much on the page editing. So when I roll over things, for instance, if you see the form on the right hand side, get your copy now, you see that, that here it tells me that it's a form and this is in a column over here. So you build these components in rows, and then you can break the rows up into columns. So it's literally just rolling over. So I'm rolling over the creating a squeeze page. Actually, I'm on the beginner's guide to piece. And if I tap in there, it pops up the WYSIWYG that allows me to work on it. Uh, and I really find that this is a really simple WYSIWYG. The theme that I use has a lot of different components you can choose from. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. But this is a really nice little plug-in for creating a pop-up page. So if I wanted to edit this text, all I have to do is tap this Edit Text uh, document, and now my text is editable. So I could be the very beginner's guide. And then you just redo uh, right there. You can, it's got all the icons you're familiar with when you're working in Word or when you're creating a post in your WordPress website. So you can justify the, the um, text, whether you want it left, right, or centered. You have line heights, you have uh, bullet numbers and bullet numbers and bullet bullets. You've got your fonts, whether you want it um, to be uh, a colored font or not. So you have the text color here and you have the background color here. And you can see that all you have to do is roll over your cursor and the bubble will come up and tell you what it's uh, about. You can create links if you'd like to. If you have an HTML background, the source page is there where you can look at the source and use HTML in the background if you like. When you're finished, all you have to do is tap this little done uh, uh, link right there, and now your change has been made. So you're going to be building this pretty much uh, we've got the one long row here, and then this row here where you have the book image on the left, the chapters in the middle, and the form on the right, this row has been broken down into three columns. So it makes it really easy for you to be able to um, format it with visual instead of HTML because I don't know if any of you are familiar at all with HTML. If you're not, it would probably make your head spin because um, the HTML requires you to know how to structure everything with alpha 
alpha and numerals. So having a WYSIWYG like this is really convenient. If you scroll down a little bit further, we've added a row down below this blue one that gives us an author bio, and then it gives you some reviews as well or some testimonials that you can use. When you scroll up, if you tap up in this upper left-hand corner, the uh, orange uh, background with the plus, it gives you a list of all the different components you can incorporate into this landing page. So you can have a row, you can have columns. So uh, we'll go ahead and add a section here. Let's see where that goes. Oh, look at that, it's a drag and drop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it. And now I have a section above that I can put content into, which makes it really nice. And if I wanted to get rid of this section, oh, I could duplicate the section, or if I wanted to get rid of the section, here's the little right here, just tap the trash can and the section's gone. So if we look at this drop down menu again, come on, you could do it. There we go. You have a lot of things you can choose from. Now the form piece looks like it's grayed out. So the form piece may be a premium piece to this plugin that you can add um, and you have to pay extra for. But otherwise, it has a lot of, that's the only piece that's uh, out. Maybe that's because there's already form here and you've already used that form option. Maybe you can only use it once. So it gives you a lot of pieces that you can use to drag and drop and put your content together with. When you come up to the very top with this plugin, there's a drop down menu here because you have, sorry, let me get rid of that. There we go. You have the main page, which is what is showing right now, but you also have a thank you page. Uh, when you're doing an opt-in, what you want to do is be able to send them to a thank you page after they've opted in to be able to either give them the item that they're opting in for or to say thank you if you're handling the opt-in a little differently. When I handle my opt-ins for populating my email database, I will, uh, mine is a double opt-in, which most of our email service providers are a double opt-in, meaning that I can submit the form, and then I like to be thanking, taken to a thank you page where I can say thank you, you know, watch your inbox for the confirmation. When they get the confirmation, once they tap the confirmation, then they're taken to where they can download whatever it is that you're giving them. So depending on how your email service provider works, um, you'll have to decide what you want to do. It may be that you'd like to just use this thank you page to deliver the uh, PDF if that's what you're giving them uh, or not. So it depends again upon what your goal is. If you're uh, having them sign up to pay you for an object or an item or a workshop, then you're going to want to um, just send them on to a thank you page, letting them know that uh, they'll be receiving details of the event when it comes up. So that makes it pretty cool here that it's got that thank you page built in for you. And this is what that thank you page looks like. And again, you have all the tools that you want to be able to um, uh, customize this thank you page. This other little guy on the left with the palette are your page designs. So you can kind of uh, even look back at your history of the page to see what you've done. Uh, that's a nice feature, especially if you have it in your WordPress installation as well on your pages and your posts. 
So you could go back and see the revision history for all of that if you wanted to take your page back to a time in the past for some reason. Every once in a while, sometimes we make a mistake on our page and it's nice to have the revision history where we can pull ourselves back to the version just before the mistake that we So you have that here in your page design as well. It also has other templates that you can use if you'd like to change the template. So you're not stuck with this one particular template. That's why I was so impressed when I saw the um, uh, templates over here and that it was nice versus the other landing page that I was seeing. So, and it even gives you a blank template where you can go ahead if you're uh, visually uh, good. And I, I'll tell people that I'm, I'm pretty good at the programming and that on the visual end, I suck. So it's always nice for me to have access to some sort of image or templates. And I really like that a lot. So this has a lot of different templates that you can use for your landing page. Uh, you can also come up here to the top of your landing page, this plugin, and do some A-B testing. So you would have, uh, you would actually be creating two landing pages. It might be that you would be testing the um, headline to see if that's enticement enough. You might want to test the colors as well because, uh, and I don't know, Shelly can, Shelly can listen up here and, and give me a yay or a nay and straighten me out one of the ways. But in my research, what I found is that if you use the color yellow, it's for optimistic and youthful, and it's often used to grab a viewer's attention. Orange is aggressive, and it's used as a call to action or attention grabber. Red is energy. So it increases the heart rate and it creates urgency and it's often seen with clearance sales and references to food. Okay, pink, what the hell? I don't think this will come as any surprise that pink is romantic and feminine and used to market products and services for women and young girls. And then the color blue creates the sensation of trust and security. It's uh, often the color that I lean towards is the color blue. It's also, as you would guess, used by banks and businesses. Purple is soothing and calm, and it relates to beauty or anti-aging products and services. Green, of course, is associated with wealth, so it's the easiest color for the eye to process, and it's used with financial or entertainment websites. And then black, which is one of my favorite colors next to white, is powerful and sleek, and it's seen as luxurious and um, sophisticated. So um, you want to think about that when you're putting your content together, what coloring that you might want to be able to use with it. So in your A-B testing, you may want to choose one color and a, then a second color to see which of those colors might pull more. And when you're doing an A-B testing, you kind of want to do it with one component at a time. If you were to change the headlines and the coloring and maybe the uh, type of font that you're using, then you have too many factors that you've changed for you to be able to ascertain whether one piece pulled better than the other. So my, my opinion, I would start with headline first and then maybe color second. But that's what A-B testing is. It lets you go ahead and split it into two and test some of those specifics. And then you have settings here where you can go through these things and take a look at them. SEO settings, sharing setting, settings, uh, tracking codes. It's really uh, pretty extensive, I think, for a plugin. I was really pleased to find it. The preview is just going to let us uh, preview the landing page before we publish it. And then I thought this was really interesting. And this is one of the components I really like about this plugin is you have a couple of different options here. Um, I was working with the custom domain is what I usually do with my landing pages. So 
if you were to type in webwithdeb.com forward slash Facebook, it would take you to the Facebook landing page. And I have, I'll send you the code for that. You, it's HTML code. You have to put it up to your server. So maybe your webmaster can help you with it. But I'll definitely send you the code. It's a redirection code which says if you type in A, send them to B and let them feel like they're actually on A. So um, if you had a specific URL that you wanted to build this on, you could use the URL to direct people to this specific landing page, even though this landing page is already a part of your website. And that may not make a lot of sense to some of you, so I'll try and when I send the email out with you, I'll try and explain it a little bit better. But I chose for this one to use the Wishpond URL, which is where the plugin is. So I'll send you that link in the email. You can publish it on your own domain. I tried that with WordPress. It's a little bit uh, tough to do it with WordPress and use the redirect. So that's why I went back over to the Wishpond one. You can publish this to your Facebook page. So this is a really nice feature so that you can use your social media sites to be able to bring them into uh, your email service provider or to be able to bring them into event or to sell them something off of Facebook. So it'll actually publish it to your Facebook page. I'm sure it gives you a code and there's probably an app over there for you to use to be able to publish it to the Facebook page. I'll play with it a little bit more afterward and find out so I can let you know for sure in the email how that does. And then the embed code. So what the embed code does is it allow, allows us to put it into our either a WordPress page or a post. And when you use the embed code, what I talk to people about is, let me just scoot over here to um, a new post. Oops, I'm sorry. Hold on. So I'm just going to open this in a new tab. There we go. Oh, the code. So if I had it give me, where do we go? If I were had it giving me the embed code. Oh, here it is. Okay, so select. Uh, I'm sorry, not that one. Publishing options, the embed code. So you see it gives me a bunch of code in there. This is when I look at my clients and I see their eyes roll to the back of their heads. I'm just going to copy the code to my clipboard. And then when I come to the new post, when we look at our Facebook post or page, usually we're looking at the visual tab. And you know you're on the visual tab because you can see the B for bold, the I for italics, you can see the, um, uh, the icon for um, creating a bullet list, an icon for creating the number list that's next to it. So you know that you're on the visual tab. If you come over to the right hand side and you move from the visual tab over to the text tab, when I tap the text tab, now all those familiar icons are gone. And that's how you know that you're in the text. So you simply put your cursor where you want it. And I tell people that if you have a whole bunch of text in your uh, post here, and you're going to have a hard time finding a place to put it when you go to the text tab. So what I do is in all caps, I type in put code here. And that way, when I tap into my text tab, all I have to look for is that all cap item that says put code here. And I can highlight that 
and just paste the code in. And then I tap back to my visual tab. Now you can't see this because we haven't published this page and the WYSIWYG doesn't always let you see what the code is all about. So you'd have to uh, save the draft and then we'll preview it and see uh, if it shows. Uh, it may or, oh yeah, because we already built it, so let's preview it. So you can see all my garbledy gook uh, uh, content on the top. But here, because we put that embed code, here's the squeeze page right here inside of one of our posts. So one of the things you might think about doing too with your email service provider is creating a small horizontal form, an intake form for your email service provider that lets them sign up and then maybe between the third and fourth paragraph of your blog post insert that opt-in form right there i've seen it used really successfully and this plugin should be able to help you do that but you can definitely put an opt-in form into your blog posts that allow people to sign up for your email newsletter right there from your blog post so that's how easy it is to use the embed code to be able to um, create a uh, page, an HTML page that you can actually embed into your regular page without having any of the, um, have ha without having to know how to actually write HTML or PHP if you have to write PHP. And just so you know, this site is my, um, showcasing site where I do my webinars from. So I don't let the search engines search it. And uh, that's why it doesn't look like a built out web because it's not. It's merely here for me to use as a teaching tool. So um, do any of you have any questions that I can answer for you? Oh, while I'm right here, uh, did you what did you embed? form. I, well, I actually embedded the entire squeeze page that was created from the plugin. Bye, Pia. I'll send you all the recording. Um, I embedded the entire squeeze page because that's what was already built out. So that's what I put in there. I, I just used the embed code. When we go back over to the landing page, so here's the landing page that we created with the plugin. And what I did was I came up here to the top right hand where it says publishing options and I transferred the or the publishing options and that's when it gave me the four different choices. So I used the end code for that. Uh, when you present info in columns, does that affect the mobile view? Yes, it does affect the mobile view. It, I don't think it affects it adversely. I definitely know that when I'm looking at, for instance, Web with Dev on my mobile device, there is a three column uh, section on the home page uh, for the two webinars and then the um, private consults. And when you look at it on a mobile device, they are stacked on top of each other. So. The Facebook one will come up and then you scroll a little more. The WordPress will come up and then you scroll a little more. The consult will come up. So yes, they're definitely uh, here. And also, Catherine, since you mentioned that, let's go back to the main page here. And up in this upper navigation where I'm at main page, there's a screen right here. And I've just dropped down the menu this allows you to preview it so this is a desktop computer on the top this is your tablet and then this is your mobile device so if i tap the mobile device now you're getting an idea of what this looks like if you were looking at it on a phone and all of these 
WYSIWYG tools usually give you that option to be able to see what it looks like, not only on a desktop or laptop, but also on a tablet and a mobile device, because I think we're all pretty really well aware that it's the, um, most of us are using our stuff on our phones. I mean, I saw a comic the other day, I had shared it on Facebook a couple of years ago where people were going into the water, they were at the beach in Hawaii or something, it was a cartoon, and when um, you saw everybody's tan, they were all tan except for where the hands were holding the phones over their stomachs and chest and that area was white. So uh, we're all using phones all the time, then our tablets, um, and then I suppose most of us in our offices are using our computers. But I know I'm on my phone all the time, so most of your email service providers, I use GetResponse. When I'm creating my email, I can definitely see what it will look like when people are looking at it on a tablet or on a mobile device as well. So those are the two ways that you can use your WordPress site. I really like that my theme has the option to use a blank page, which removes all of the navigation, my menu from the top of it. Because remember, when we're creating these landing pages or squeeze pages, we want them to do one thing either subscribe to our email newsletter so we can reach out to them, we want them to sign up for something, or we want them to purchase something. So we want, don't want them distracted by any other types of navigations. Are there any other questions? Do you all think that this is something you'll be able to use, either the plugin or checking your theme and be able to build some landing pages so that you can start to really uh, populate your email database would be the first thing I would do, and then uh, events would be the second thing I would do with uh, landing pages. And I think you'll find this plugin if you don't have a theme that lets you use a visual builder. And that, let me just, while we have a few minutes, let me just log into web with dev and show you the uh, visual builder because they this is the divi theme um, i'll send a link to the divi theme as well um, but this is the way that web development is going now and i think one of the reasons that i work in wordpress is because i saw how easy it was for my clients to be able to keep their website up to date because they had a WordPress um, website, which meant it's just like using Word where you can create your own content and put it in. So uh, this is what it looks like in the background. So, you know, when you're going to create a page, this is what it looks like when you're using a visual composer. So you see that we have rows, and the rows can be broken up into different modules. So uh, this image right here on the upper left is the logo that I have, and then this second row is the text. So let's take a look at it when we're looking at it through the builder itself. And the nice thing about the change they made is now when we log into our WordPress website and we have the builder up, all I have to do is tap this link at the top. I'm going to enable the visual builder. So now it's come up and now you see the boundary boxes. So if I just hover my cursor over a specific piece, I have the opportunity right here. I can, with this icon here, I can move the module. I can see what the module settings are. I can clone the module if I want to or duplicate it. I can also save the module to a library. So I have a client who has a quarterly planning session for business, 
So on our homepage, we have an area that we set aside for current um, content. And I save module to the library, so I don't have to keep redoing it each time she has one of her quarterly sessions. I just pull it up from the library. And then, of course, I can trash the module if I want. If I need to add something on, when I get these bounding boxes, if you see above the bounding box here in the white, you see the black dot with the plus sign. That lets me add a row if I want. On the green outline, and if you look right below the word community, you see a green dot with a white plus sign. That allows me to add uh, another row that is size. If you move your eye down further and you see the blue box, the blue circle with the white, that's the full width row, which will allow me to create another full width row. And then once I create the rows, over here on the upper left, in the green area above the word clients and just to the left of how, I can change the column structure. So this is a single column. I can break this column up into four pieces if I want to. So these are visual builders that are coming. Uh, if your theme doesn't have one now, there's a possibility of one in the future. I'll send you a link to the Divi theme so you can take a look at it. But that kind of gives you an overview of how much easier it's getting for non-programmers to be able to create really nice pages on their websites or even using their blog posts. The visual builder can be used in a blog post as well. So it's getting close to the top of the hour. Unless there are any more questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the sharing and the recording and get this all ready and uh, put it up. I will be putting it up uh, if you're one of my speakers from Speakers Guild, I'll be putting it up over there. If you're one of my buddies, uh, you know Web with Deb will have this content too. So I'll get it up there and I'll send you the links to the different documents that I used today so that you'll have as much knowledge as possible to be able to do some of this. And of course, if you have any problems, you can definitely reach out to me. I'm sure you all know how to find me. Uh, it's easy, deb at webwithdeb.com. And then uh, check out Web with Deb if you want to see some of the upcoming workshops that I have. So I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording right now.